Muy buenas tardes, buenos días, buenas noches. I don't know when you're watching this, but as you know, it could be 2 a.m. for some of you. Um, now, we uh, have started seeing in our stories some compound verb tenses. So they're a little bit different than just straight in the past. And we do these in, in both your native language of English, if that's your first language. I know some of you, it's, it's not your first. But we do that in English and we do it in Spanish. We call them compound verbs because we use helping verbs with them. All right, where have we seen this in our story, for example? Um, we have seen it in no habían desayunado, right? They had not eaten breakfast. So compound verb forms use a helping verb and then the main verb. Okay, so we're going to see, uh, again, a few examples of how this works for all people, whatever subject, having one of these compound verbs. So, with our compound verbs in what we call the present perfect tense, okay, we call this el presente perfecto en español, present perfect in English, right? This is when we say somebody has or have done something. So, the direct equivalent in English is has or have done whatever that main verb is, right? So, in Spanish, we say yo. A, I use this gesto, right? Yo he vivido. Uh, yo he vivido. All right? And so you see where I'm getting the vivido is I take the verb vivir, which is to live. I take off my AR and I add ido. So I have yo he vivido. I have lived. Now, why would I want to say I have lived instead of just yo viví? I lived. Well, because maybe I'm still living there, right? I have lived here for 10 years. Yo he vivido aquí por 10 años. I have lived here for 10 years, but I'm still living here, so I don't know how long that's going to keep on going. That's why we call it the present perfect. It has a relation to the present tense. Yes, it's talking about the past, but there's some relation to the present. It's not completely done or it's not finished. It has some relation to it. We ask it, this in questions a lot. Has comprado el libro. Has, have you comprado? So you see where I get comprado? The verb is comprar. I take off my AR, and since it's an AR verb, this time instead of adding ido, I add ado. Has comprado el libro? Have you bought the book? So again, why would I say that instead of just saying compraste? Did you buy the book in this form? Compraste? Well, because I knew that you were going to buy the book. You had told me you were going to buy the book, but I don't know if you have yet. So I might say, ¿Has comprado el libro? Have you bought the book yet? Huh? ¿Has comprado el libro? Have you bought it? So it's this present perfect because it is talking about the past, but it has some relation to the present. So all we have to do is take whatever form of this verb, helping verb, so this is really our only helping verb in Spanish. We take whatever form of that helping verb and say for the person that has been doing it. In our story, we also said, an, uh, an visto, visto, and so that takes us to some irregular ways we form this past participle. So we call this the past participle. It's taking off the AR and adding ado, taking off the IR and adding ido, but certain verbs, and there's only about 10 of them in the language, but certain verbs go irregular when they form that past participle. Bear, the verb bear is one of those. Bear, it's irregular past participle instead of ending in ido, is visto. And in our story we asked, ¿Han, han visto mi pasaporte? Huh? ¿Han visto mi pasaporte? Okay, and so it's an irregular past participle of visto. So we see that we can do that in a number of ways. So, now we talk about our other compound tense verb form that we're seeing in stories, right? And it's called, instead of the present perfect, it's called the past perfect of the verb, right? And we mentioned this in class, we talked about it. Our example of this in class was, ellos no habían desayunado. They had not eaten breakfast. So why do we use the past perfect instead of that present perfect we just talked about? 
because this one, as we have mentioned, is here's our timeline. Here's our present tense. This is the, what's happening right now. So this is moving back toward the past. And let's say that here is when they went to the city. Ellos fueron a la ciudad, right? That's in our story. Ellos fueron a la ciudad. That happened right there in the past. But no, no habían desayunado. All took place back here prior to this other past event. So they had not eaten breakfast prior to this past event. They had not. No habían desayunado. So this past perfect tense is always used to say something that happened prior to some other past reference point, right? So as in our story, it is formed very similar to the present perfect we just looked at, but it's formed in a very similar way with just a different form of that helping verb. So as in our story, we say no habían desayunado. So you can see where we get this. They had not no habían. They had not eaten breakfast. Desayunado. So we take our verb desayunar, take off our ar, and add ado, just like we did with the present perfect. So the English direct equivalent of this is always had done whatever that next verb is, whatever the main verb is. Had or had not done something, again, prior to some other past event. So, this past perfect, one more example to kind of see it in the context of a sentence might be, I might say, well, cuando ustedes llegaron, cuando ustedes llegaron, so there's my past tense, past event that happened, right? Cuando ustedes llegaron, that happened and it's done, last night, say, anoche. Cuando ustedes llegaron, nosotros ya habíamos comido. We, nosotros, ya had already, ya already, nosotros ya habíamos comido. Habíama, habíamos comido. No? We had already eaten. So there's our past participle of comer. We take off the ER and add ido. Ya habíamos comido. So there's just a sample sentence of showing this context of here's our past event. This had already taken place prior to a past event. And we have a sentence like that. Amigos, uh, so there's just a brief explanation of your two uh, compound verb forms that we're seeing in class quite a bit. And I wanted to give you kind of a breakdown of the when, how, and uh, why we use those, but also showing the whole verb conjugation of all people doing it with our different forms of haber. E, as, a, hemos, habéis, an, for present perfect, we have or has done this, and había, habías, había, habíamos, habíais, habían, had done this prior to another past event. Muy buenas noches, nos veremos en clase.